Here's what no one else is telling you about the Vero VGC radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about my impressions of the Vero VGC, uh, what is this, a VRN76 radio. It is a really, really good radio, but it does have some gotchas that go along with it. Now, one of my first concerns with this radio is how good is the radio by itself without the included companion app that comes with it? And I've got to admit that they really nailed it with the radio itself. It is waterproof. It has USB-C recharging and it is easy to program from the front panel. I actually didn't even have to open the manual in order to program a repeater into this radio. When it came to saving that repeater to a uh, memory bank, I was able to do that without consulting the manual as well. Now, when we talk about the app, well, the app enhances an already great little HT. I have also had outstanding audio reports both from the HT and from the Bluetooth hand mic when I was talking to other local guys here on the repeater. Now, I'm not going to be going into the spurious emissions or lack thereof with this radio. That's been done several times by other channels, and we know that it's a clean radio, so it definitely gets a pass in that. But let's talk about some of the quirks, and then I'm going to give you guys my favorite feature of this radio. First of all, it does not have smart beaconing. Now, if you're not very familiar with smart beaconing with APRS, the way that works is the faster you're moving, the more often the radio will beacon your APRS position. And the slower you're moving means that there will be more time between when those packets are sent out. Now, that's not necessarily a big deal, especially when I tell you my favorite feature of this radio. Uh, but you do have options to send your packet anywhere from a few seconds to up to an hour or more between packets. But uh, that is just a single setting. So let's say if you choose every five minutes or every 10 minutes, well, it's going to beacon at that interval, regardless of how fast or how slow you're moving. It also doesn't offer support for mic E packets. And honestly, this is not a big deal to me. I understand the concept of mic E, but I've never actually seen it used in a meaningful way in the field. Now, let's talk about the station list and the messaging list. On other radios like the Yaesu FT5 or the Kenwood D75, that is compiled into two separate lists. So we have our station list over here, and we have our message list separate from our station list. In this particular radio, though, those two separate lists are combined. So you get uh, both position reports from other stations and your messages from other stations all in one list. It differentiates those by uh, making the messages a red envelope. Uh, it gives it a red envelope icon in that list. However, if you're in an APRS active area, those messages can quickly get lost in the noise. And if you don't check them often or soon enough, rather, then that message can actually get bumped off the bottom of the list. Another caveat to both your station list and your messages, if you turn this radio off, you're going to lose any of those packets. So both station lists and messages will be lost if you turn the radio on and off. So just keep that in mind as you start playing with this radio. While we're talking about APRS messages, there is another oddity with this radio, and this is kind of a big one, and I hope they can get this fixed in a future firmware release. If you send a message, the message is only sent one time. Now, to contrast that to other radios and the way just about every other APRS rig on the planet works, is if you send an APRS message, it will send that four, five, six, maybe even seven different times, depending on which particular application or radio you're working with. 
unless it gets an acknowledgement that that uh, message was received. So if I send a message and I don't hear an acknowledgement from the station that I sent it to, the radio is going to automatically retry that at different time intervals up until it just gives up. So normally that is four, five, six times that it's going to repeat that. With this particular radio, when you send a message, it gets sent exactly once. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, there's a lot of reasons that that could be an issue when we're talking about APRS. Remember, APRS runs on a single simplex frequency, and because of that, we often run into packet collisions where multiple radios are transmitting at the exact same time. So if we only send that message one time, I could end up in a packet collision situation, or maybe I'm just not heard by the DigiPeter the first time, and that message never gets delivered because it wasn't auto-retried at a time interval after that first attempt. So, like I said, this is kind of a big one if you're really into APRS and you play with APRS messages on a regular basis. Again, hopefully they can get that solved in the near future. But for now, I'll tell you a workaround here in just a second. Now, one of the things I was super excited to try uh, when I got this radio, they have a beta release of firmware that opens access to the Bluetooth TNC on that radio. Before the VGC, the only radio I could do that with was something like the D75 or the D74, which is like four times more money than this particular radio. So I was super, super stoked to see this availability in a sub $200 radio. However, again, this comes with caveats. When I connected the radio to APRS Droid, I had zero issues using the Bluetooth TNC in the N76. And this is where you can use it for a workaround to that auto retry or lack thereof of APRS messages. If you connect the radio to your phone over Bluetooth and use an app like APRS Droid, well, then you get the message retries built into APRS Droid and we don't have to rely on the radio to do those retries. So that's a good workaround for the time being. Now, on the downside uh, to the Bluetooth TNC access, I also tried to get Wode, that's uh, Winlink on Android, working. I, uh, it got the initial handshake done with the local gateway, and then it just stopped. It never would pick back up uh, and continue trying to send or receive any of my Winlink messages. The gateway was responding to me, but for whatever reason, uh, the radio and Wode just wasn't hearing that uh, exactly right. So hopefully, uh, I know this is beta firmware, and hopefully they get that resolved in one of the future beta releases or the final release of that firmware, because having access to the TNC over Bluetooth is game-changing in this price point of a radio. Also, I tried to connect Linux to the radio over Bluetooth, and again, that didn't work out. I was able to make the connection, but Yak just wasn't able to talk to the radio after that Bluetooth connection was established. And I used the same method in Linux that I have used in the past with both the Kenwood D75 and the MobiLink Bluetooth TNC. Now, with all of that said, this is still a fantastic first attempt at APRS for Vero and the VGC radio, and I have been blown away by what they've been able to accomplish so far. With a little bit more polish, this could really be a game-changing radio. Now, I told you guys I would talk about my favorite feature of this radio, and this is where Kenwood and Yezu need to take note. When I turned on the VGC with a fully charged battery and set the beacons to go out every five minutes, I got over 12 hours of battery life out of this radio. That is absolutely incredible 
and is light years beyond what I can get out of my D75. Now granted, I get a bigger battery on the VGC, but still I am getting way more battery life out of it than I can get out of the D75 or the Azu FT5. So now you know what no one else is telling you about the Vero N76 radio. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.